Now I'm choosing to um, I'm choosing to end the term on this question because I really like this question. Now I don't know about you, as a student, that's weird to me the concept of liking a question. So let me try and explain why I like this question. Number one, uh, it draws together quite a few different ideas in maths that you've been building for a long time. So it's not like exercises, you know, which are very simple and repetitive and like just this one one skill. I just do it over and over and over again. I find that very boring. This. It draws together a whole bunch of um, abilities and um, techniques and algorithms you've learned. Okay, so there's the first thing. The second thing I like about it is that it justifies the trapezoidal rule. You learn trapezoidal, you learn Simpsons, and you're like, why do we do this? You can use integration from you know so many different functions and it's precise. Why would you go through this awkward long formula, which is inaccurate anyway? Okay, this will show you one of the reasons why. And thirdly. Um, it sort of solves a mystery for me, which I had when I was younger. Um, they often talk about, okay, we know what pi is, and we know it to some certain number of decimal places, right? Okay. Now, they used to say, or they still say, you know, we have calculated pi to, you know, however, however many decimal places. And I think it's something like um, 10 to the 14 or 10 to the 15 decimal places that we've worked out, which is crazy. Like, why would you ever need so many? That's beside the point. My question was how? how? How did they do it? Like, what is pi? No, seriously, by definition, what is pi? It's a ratio between between the, the circumference of a circle and its diameter, right? If there's about 3.14 diameters around the circumference, right? Now, if that's your definition of pi, how do you get pi to any degree of accuracy? Right? If it's about a ratio, like what did they do? Get a really, really big circle and a really long piece of string and then just write it around. Like how did they work that out? How did they get it to such a stupid level of accuracy? And when you finish solving this question, it starts to prod at how they do that, which is really quite clever when you think about it. It has less to do with circles, almost nothing to do with circles, actually. So let's have a go. Part A, it starts off very simply. Show that the tangent at P has a given equation. So you might not have done this question before, or yet, rather, but we can work through this, right? The graph is cos, okay? If we want the tangent of p, what am I going to need to do? First, I'll need to differentiate. So if y is equal to cos x, the derivative, of course, is? It's the last day of school. Wow. <laughs> Brain's not on yet. It's like, come on, give me a break. I even turned up to school. You should be happy that I'm here. The derivative is negative sign, okay? Now, we want it at this particular point, and they tell you it lines up with pi on 4, okay? So you'd say, when x is pi on 4, y is going to be equal to cos pi on 4, which is 1 over 2. Yeah. <laughs> we really are slow today. And um, the derivative, which is negative sine of pi on 4, is negative 1 over 2. Okay, great. What do I do with that? Where do I put it? Point graded form, which looks like this. Okay, so let's just quickly chuck them in. What am I going to get? 1 on root 2 uh, minus 1 on root 2 x minus pi on 4. Now, <coughs> excuse me, that is the equation of the tangent. They just want it in a specific awkward form, which is neither slope gradient form nor general form, but whatever. Okay, we can multiply through by root 2. Okay, so that gives you root 2y minus 1. I'm going to get rid of the brackets as well. So that gives you minus x plus pi on 4. Okay? <coughs> and then all they want you to do is swap the negative things around. So you get x plus that is that plus pi on 4. As required. Okay. Then they say, show that m, that's this coordinate up here, which is on the tangent that lines up with pi on 6. Okay? Show that m has a y coordinate of, and then they give you one, and then they ask you to find the corresponding y coordinate for m. Right? So how would I do it? This is part of this is part b now. All you have to do is take that equation you just got, stick in pi on 3, and stick in pi on 6. Okay? And you get there. Now, let's just quickly jot down, because um, for m, the y coordinate of m, they do actually give that to you. And um, I think you guys can work that out yourself. Okay. Now, when you're working out the y coordinate for n, 
when you stick it in, the only difference is you get a negative here. Okay, so you'll get 1 on 24 root 2, 12 minus pi. And there's your coordinates. Okay. Now part C is where it starts to get interesting, and this is why I was talking about trapezoidal rule. Okay. They ask you to work out the areas of two trapeziums. Okay. The first one is, I think it's M, C, D, M. Okay. In other words, it's that trapezium built off of the tangent. Okay. But then they ask you to work out another trapezium which is not labelled on the diagram. Okay. Partly because it's quite hard to label on the diagram. But if you draw it in, try and do it carefully, something like that. Okay. So it's A, B, D, C. Okay. You can see it's a trapezium not just above like the tangent, but just below. Okay. So how do we work out these um, trapezia? Uh, you already worked out these lengths here, right? So that refers to CM, CM there, CM. Okay. And this refers to DM. Okay, so these are two parallel sides here. Okay. So if I want to work out the area of, let's do this bigger trapezium. Okay. Um, so I should have written C, M, N, D. Okay. What's the formula for the area of a trapezium again? H on 2, and then the parallel sides. Right? <clears throat> what is the height here? It's here, isn't it? That's the height. Pi on 3 minus pi on 6 is pi on 6. So that's going to become pi on 12 at the front there because I'm dividing by 2. And then you've got these two things. Now, it looks like it's awful, but they're conjugates, aren't they? Right? They're conjugates. So when I subtract, sorry, when I add this and this, the pi's are going to cancel, aren't they? Can you see that when you add them together? So instead, I'm just going to get two of these guys. Okay. 2 times 1 over 24 root 2 times 12. Okay? Now that's convenient. Look at that. 2, 12, that's 24. You're dividing by 24. So you're just getting pi on 12 times root 2. Is that okay? See where I got that from? See how these, um, <coughs> these pi's will cancel out because they're conjugates. That's the bigger trapezium, the upper one that's built off the tangent. What's the area of the smaller one? Um, this is uh, A, B, D, C, isn't it? Well, it's going to be the same height, right? The trapeziums, they, the trapezia, they line up like that. So this is still going to be pi on 12 out the front, okay? Now, what's our A and B? What are the lengths of our parallel sides here? Well, this one will be cos pi on 3, and this one will be cos pi on 6. What's cos pi on 6? That's root 3 on 2, isn't it? And cos pi on 3, that's a half. Yep. So I can just tidy that up a little bit. Pi on 24, root 3 plus 1. Let's check if that's what I got before. <coughs> Always reassure you when you get the right answer. There you go. 